Hello hackers! Welcome to the second video in the kernel module of Pwn College. We're going to be talking about environmental setup. Why are we going to be talking about this? Well, that's because it's more complicated for the kernel than um, you are used to for uh, the binaries we've been attacking so far. Binaries are relatively simple. They're an elf. They have you know segments. You you load them. Uh, boom, nice and simple. Um, what we're about to dive into is more complex. We're diving into an entire environment, an entire system that's running with a kernel, with user space binaries, with command interpreters, with uh, quite a lot of um, you know crazy stuff inside them. And we're going to be exploiting that. All right. So how do we um, uh, set up this environment? Um, well, of course, you could use your workstation. You say, OK, my workstation is running a kernel. No problem. Um, I'll just uh, run, um, you know, write a kernel module, load it, hack it. Um, but you likely mess up. You'll either have a bug in your kernel module, you'll have a bug in your exploit, you will crash stuff. And when you crash stuff inside the kernel, as I talked about in the previous video, you're uh, playing in high stakes, right? You're in ring zero. It's not just a sec fault and uh, go on with your day. Your entire computer can crash. Um, my first time I taught the kernel um, in class, um, I used due to an overabundance of confidence, uh, my own workstation, my own laptop for demos and had to reboot several times. Um, so it's much easier to use an emulated environment with which you can play around, debug, um, and so on. For this, you'll need a compiler to compile the environment, to um, compile programs that you'll write inside the environment. <laughs> When you are launching exploits into the kernel, typically you're doing that from user space binary. So you'll need to, your exploits um, for the kernel will be user space C programs that interact with the kernel in specific ways. Um, when you are, uh, um, you will live inside, inside your, your emulated system, there'll be a, a user space, a, a tiny, um, you know, command interpreter uh, and, and so on. Um, you need to build that, you need to have that, and you need to have an emulator to run all of this. All right. We created a nice convenient setup for you um, under the Pwn College repository. Um, uh, under the Pwn College organization on GitHub called Pwn Kernel. So let's take a look. Um, here I have already uh, checked out the um, uh, Pwn Kernel repository. You can see this is the, the readme and the readme is very simple to build my emulator environment. I just do build.sh. This uh, I already actually built it um, before recording this video. So this will just uh, do a couple of checks, build some stuff that, that it rebuilds every time. And then we're good to go. You can see here. It is um, creating, basically setting up a busy box user space, very similar to the type of user space that is um, shipped with uh, a lot of routers and other embedded devices. Um, very small, um, single, one single program that provides the functionality of basically um, a lot of the normal um, tools you, you interact with on a daily basis, LS, CP, these sort of things. Okay, and then we do launch. Launch will bundle up that user space into a file system and start the emulator. The emulator we're using is QEMU. Um, and uh, it drops us into an emulated Linux system with a user space. Um, for your convenience, we even have a flag for you to play around with. There are um, kernel modules that are pre-compiled, example kernel modules. We'll talk about that in the next video. I won't actually touch on that right now. And uh, basically, there's everything you need to survive in Linux. As I mentioned, all of these are symbolic links to the BusyBox uh, binary. Then BusyBox, depending on how you invoke it, what argv0 is, will you um, act like these different utilities. Uh, this is a very cool um, uh, sort of... Um, uh, 
system in Linux. All right. Um, so we are inside this uh, kernel. We can do, um, we are inside an emulated system, an emulated kernel. Uh, there's an emulator inside that. There's a kernel running in what it thinks is ring zero. And then inside that, or also inside the emulator in ring three, there's a user space that's running. Um, one extra thing I'll mention, super, super useful for these little um, exploitation environments. Um, we mount your home directory from your host system in slash home slash CTF. So I go home CTF pwn kernel. This is the same environment, uh, the same files as in pwn kernel in my normal uh, on my normal machine. That means I can do my exploit development on the normal machine. And then I take those exploits, I compile them and I um, execute them. I compile them on my normal machine because there is no compiler inside the um, box, uh, the kernel box, and then I execute them. Um, all right, Let, or for example, I can write scripts. Uh, if I do bin save, there's no bash inside the container, inside the, the, sorry, inside the emulated machine. I can do echo hello, and I make that executable. And there it is, hi.sh, boom. All right, so this makes it very easy. You launch a screen session, you have, you're inside the, um, uh, emulated system, your experimental or your challenge machine when you, for the practice problem of this module, you will be running those practice problems inside these emulated systems on our infrastructure. Um, and then you just uh, interact with it from the inside while being able to, uh, do your normal development from the outside super super useful okay um let's uh take a look on what you can do with this right so we've covered okay there is such a thing as emulation you saw me inside that emulator um wandering around all right let's talk about debugging obviously when you launch um and, and start doing exploitation inside this um uh, virtual machine you will need to um debug um Luckily, uh, we have a, a new enough version of GDB for you. And we compile the kernel with debug symbols. And we have turned off address space randomization in the kernel for this module, or at least for the, the first couple of, of, of challenges that you'll be interacting with for now. With all of this um, true, you can debug reasonably. That means that there are, um, you know, function names that GDB will tell you and so forth. So I'm going to um, jump into and, and show you how to debug interactions with the kernel. Um, uh, before I go into this, recall that when you do a syscall, as I talked about in the previous module, you will do several things. Change your um, privilege level to ring zero. You will jump into the kernel into the syscall uh, handler instruction that the kernel earlier set into the uh, L, L star register, and you will put the return address in RCX. I'm going to show you um, that happening, um, all three of those effects, or at least two of them. The third one's kind of hard to look at. Okay, so here I am on my host machine. I'm going to create, oops. I'm going to um, actually uh, use some normal exit shellcode from my uh, exit, um, just an example, uh, shellcode from the uh, shellcode module. All this does, we'll call the exit uh, system call um, right here, right? And I'm going to compile this. It's very important for the, these purposes to compile it um, statically because the user space inside the simulated kernel, if we do find slash lib, there are no libraries. There isn't even slash lib. Um, there is no LDD because there are no um, statically uh, dynamically linked binaries in here. Um, there's no file, but if I uh, go into, this is, the unpacked file system before we, when we actually run the emulation, we pack this this file system that build.sh puts together uh, into a, an archive that then gets passed into the kernel, uh, into the emulator when the emulator runs. 
you don't have to worry about all of this this is the unpacked version if you look at busybox it is a statically linked binary there are no libraries inside here so everything else has to be statically linked as well okay so we create a statically linked library um uh by default this means it won't be uh position independent which is good because it'll be easier for us to debug um and uh here we go uh the, and then dash no std lib okay of course there's also the assemble command if you use shell tools but um that's uh this works great so now we have our exit executable statically linked that if we just run it outside of the emulator it just calls exit zero okay all right so um actually let's obj dump it so we know where to break uh excuse the horrible at and syntax okay we're gonna break here the entry point 401000 and see what happens. All right, so how can we do this? One, uh, there's no GDB in here and it wouldn't help us if there was because we want to debug the kernel. This is going to be all about debugging the kernel, not the user space, right? Um, so the way that we launch this is actually super um, cool uh, if we, launch.sh we use qemu as our emulator and we pass the dash s argument to qemu this means open up a gdb server port on port one two three four and if you connect to that port from gdb you can debug the kernel that is going to be so cool all right let's um uh we run gdb and uh, what file do we give to gdb for it to read uh functions and stuff from um, we will give it the Linux kernel that was compiled. It's called VM Linux. Um, this is also an ELF file. Very simple, very standard actually. Uh, I mean, simple is a relative term. So if we disassemble this, this is the Linux kernel. All right, this is where it's going to be at. And then this is all of the Linux kernel. It's insane. All right, this is going to be very large. Let's see how many lines of disassembly. This might take minutes, so I might kill it soonish. Nope. The Linux kernel has 6,682,034 lines of disassembly and, and white space and stuff from OpStump. That's insane. All right. So um, using GDB, we can... Um, uh load it so this loads the linux kernel now we are going to um attach to the uh port that this running system has opened that that qemu has opened for us so you do remote and this is just a network port tcp port 1234 boom and we've attached and we are so you can see everything is working because we uh, have function names. We are at the default idle function. That means nothing is happening. The kernel is idle. We can, of course, do the standard stuff, look at, uh, at, at the instruction pointer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is kernel space. Look at this crazy address, FFFFFFF. We are in kernel space now. We are, we are not in user space anymore. Okay. Um, now, of course, we are uh, GDB uh, has paused execution. We're we are, um, looking around, and, and as you can see, if I start typing here, nothing's happening. If we continue execution, boom, something has happened all of a sudden. We're running again. I can hit Control C here to interrupt execution again, continue, and so forth. All right, let's go to home, CTF, pwn, and here's our exit, right? We don't have S trace in here, unfortunately, but if you compile S trace statically linked, we could run strace in here but we'll have to trust that exit is calling the exit syscall and of course it is you can see the argument uh, the return value is zero all seems to be good now how do we debug this how do we debug the kernel i want to show you for the purpose of this video the transition from user space into kernel space when syscall is called right 
So let's um, take a look. Um, just to remind ourselves, the entry point is 401.000. Pause execution here. And just like normal, create a breakpoint at 401.000. Okay? That's not a kernel address, but that's okay. We are in charge of the whole system. We're debugging the computer, the emulated computer that QEMU is providing to us. This is incredible. Oops, I accidentally um, hit, made a second breakpoint. All right, so if I do info break, here's my breakpoint at the entry point. All right, I continue and I run exit and it hangs. Why does it hang? Because it dropped into my breakpoint. How cool is that? I am inside, um, connected to, uh, I am in GDB connected to QEMU that is emulating a Linux system inside which my exit uh, program is running and I have uh, interrupted it in a breakpoint. So I can add a display. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna X or EAX. It's gonna load the exit um, call and then it'll do um, or the exit uh, syscall number, and then it'll run syscall. Of course, in the last video, you remember what the fact syscall has, and we're going to observe them. So let's step, step. This is something that you will never have seen before, most likely, unless you've seen it before. Um, normally, if you do step instruction here, you'll just step past the syscall, and the syscall will be executed no longer. I am peeling back the curtain, and you can see the syscall being called. All right, this is super cool. We are inside the kernel. We're inside the kernel and we're inside um, this entry syscall 64, 64 of course, 64 bits, entry syscall. Um, and uh, we are doing all sorts of crazy stuff that we, we don't recognize. Um, half of these instructions are weird. There's some, some weird uh, segment offset here. Um, this is basically a pointer somewhere in memory, essentially. And this is an offset off of it. Um, there is, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's complicated. We just walked into a syscall instruction. This is awesome. Um, if you recall, syscall not only transfer control for here, but it puts the return address into RCX. And as we can see, RCX here is 40106. That is here. Of course, the exit is called doesn't return. The, the process is terminated, but um, there we are. All right, um, a couple of things. Um, you're probably used to doing next instruction to step over call so you don't go deep, deep, deep. That seems to be broken either in my version of GDB on, on, on 2004 or in some interaction between GDB and QEMU, what does work is you can do step instruction and we're gonna step instruction for a while here and eventually we'll see it saving off a whole bunch of, of uh, state and then initializing a bunch of stuff. So it's saving a bunch of, of things and, and zeroing stuff out. Um, and it's doing this push, right? You might say, oh, you know, it's pushing stuff onto our stack and our stack's in user space. That doesn't seem very safe. Some kernel secrets could be leaked. That's not the case. It, um, if we scroll up, we'll see it actually changing the um, stack to be our um, kernel stack. Anyways, let's walk in. This is uh, the do syscall function, which will actually do uh, figure out which syscall to do and then do it. This entry point just saves all the state does the syscall and then um, um, when when the syscall returns, it'll uh, re restore the state and return. We'll, we'll step through that in a sec. I can't do NI, it's gonna break. So I'm gonna do SI, I'm now inside do syscall and in here I just do finish and it'll run until exit from that syscall. And of course, I'm guessing that that syscall never uh, returns because it's exit. Let me do a different syscall real quick. Um, let's just do read. Uh, let's do send file. Uh, send file is 40.
So we do 40, we'll um, move RAX one, uh, sorry, not RAX, uh, move RDI one. So our first argument, the out is our standard out, the in is our standard in. Uh, we will move um, RDX uh, zero. The third argument is the offset. And then R uh, 10, is it R 10 or R eight? I just went blank. I need more sleep. Uh, it is R 10. I just looked it up. I can't believe I, I went blank. Okay, and then 128. So this will just uh, do a send file once. Um, let's do the same, uh, nope, wrong one. Uh, uh, let's just assemble using this, send file.s. Okay, send file. Why seg fault? What am I screwing up? Oh, send file probably can't. Um, okay, we, we, it doesn't matter what it is. It'll just do a system call, and we're going to watch it doing a system call. All right. Um, uh, okay. The um, offset or the entry point remains the same. So our um, uh, breakpoint is still valid. So let's run send file. Okay, here we are at the breakpoint. Set up everything. Syscall. Boom, we are in the kernel. Step, 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 step through all of this initialization. Okay, step into the call, finish. Okay, that one returned. Now we can step, 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 and I wanna show you the sysret instruction where we go back into user space. Here we go, we're restoring the saved state. You saw all those pushes in the beginning that saves the state and now we're restoring it. Um, and, and here is even restoring the, um, the user space stack pointer before it's our stack pointer is in the kernel. Now our stack pointer uh, it is still in the kernel hasn't restored yet. Ooh, the CR3 uh, register, we're messing around with it. Here we go, pop RSP, and then we'll do a sysret to go back to user space. So here's say goodbye to our kernel stack, back to user space stack, and sysret, and we're back in user space. Of course, um, in, in the garbage that is after our syscall. How cool is that? And of course that returned back to RCX. Okay, um, that was us debugging a running kernel. Very exciting stuff. We can also um, put a breakpoint actually. Uh, let's disable the first breakpoint. We can put a breakpoint on the um, entry syscall or the do syscall function itself. How do we find where that is? There are two ways. One, if we have the kernel image, we can um, use um, object dump, of course. Um, so we can do object dump dash D Linux uh, VM Linux, um, or actually better use NM dash A Linux VM Linux and grep for do syscall. Here it is, that's great. So now we know where to break. Um, there's also an awesome functionality provided by the kernel itself. Um, actually, let me go real quick over uh, to the slides. Okay, um, functionality provided by the kernel itself in slash proc slash k all sims which will um, print out basically a list of uh, symbols. So if you go back to the um, to here, proc k okay, all sims. Oh shit! I killed my system. Be very careful if you do control. The way that we launch QEMU here, 
so that it's not trivially escapable through special key presses that Kimo interprets, it won't catch control C. If you control C, that whole emulator is dead. Luckily, again, files in home CTF are persistent. Okay, anyways, um, cat slash proc a all sim. These are all of the symbol addresses of the kernel. I screwed up because it's gonna take forever. That. Okay, and we can grab do syscall. Syscall, obviously there are many handlers. And here, this is the same address as this. Now, there is such a thing as kernel address space randomization. For now, it's disabled. We'll talk about it later. Um, so for now, these are always predictable. This only works if you have root access inside your machine. If you don't have root access and you don't have um, uh, a source of those addresses, such as the, the kernel image, uh, you're in trouble. You have to have a leak similar to ASLR. Um, but with root access, you can look all this up. So now we have this address. We can, of course, put a breakpoint here. Oops. Uh, we need to reconnect because I... Killed the kernel back. Okay. So we, we are, uh, we've attached. We can put a breakpoint at the do syscall. We continue. And then um, now anything we run including just typing into my uh, shell will trigger this breakpoint. Very cool, huh? Um, and we can, of course, see um, what's going to happen. Continue, and, and of course, there are tons and tons of syscalls of different numbers. Read syscall, whatever syscall seven is. Let's see what syscall seven is. Poll and so forth, yeah. A lot of syscalls going on um, in the normal operation of my shell. So if you uh, do your debugging like this, you might want to be a little more specific um, about uh, where you break. Um, but a good way to debug is actually like I did. You break at um, uh, inside a user space binary and address you know, and then you follow from there. Um, Alternatively, if you're debugging kernel module, you can break specifically inside the kernel module you're debugging. We'll talk about that next video. All right, if you're really interested in all of this, um, some further reading, um, here's a description of how we set up um, a kernel exploit uh, environment. If you, or, or you can, of course, read the source code of um, Pwn kernel. Um, there's an entire document on kernel debugging uh, from QE, running the kernel in QEMU and debugging from GDB, what I just showed off real quick. Um, and a much more feature rich um, kind of analog to Pwn kernel um, where you can uh, explore uh, the, you can experiment <clears throat> with different architectures uh, Linux kernel on ARM, et cetera, et cetera, different kernel versions, uh, much more feature rich. rich. Um, all right, uh, next uh, video, talk about kernel modules.